Hello and welcome to this massive open online course, Introduction to Bio-Risk Management. I am your instructor Kenneth and in this segment we will be discussing about samples and specifically referring to hospital derived samples. Now in your role as a laboratory technician in a biosafety le level 3 laboratory, you will be required to analyze samples from different locations. Samples which are derived from researchers which consist of exanic or pure cultures are easy to analyze because the risk can be assessed very easily. We are aware of the biological agent and we are also aware of any modifications which have been made to that biological agent. The situation changes slightly when we have to analyze samples derived from patients. These may be in the form of swabs, uh, serum samples, blood, urine or stools. Now, when samples are received from hospitals, they may consist of more than one biological agent within a single sample. How do we address this risk? So, in the case of hospital samples, we assume the highest possible risk. Now, when samples are received from hospitals, they will be shipped in a special packing container. Okay, this is an example of a bag in which the sample will be shipped. And this bag will be sealed, it will be locked with a tie and then shipped in a container which may contain ice or some other refrigerant such as uh, carbon dioxide ice, CO2 ice, what we call as a dry ice. Okay, so when you receive the samples, the first thing which you need to do is to ensure that the outer packing material is thoroughly sterilized with a sterilant. In our case, we use 70% ethanol. We wait for around 30 seconds and we open the bag after 30 seconds. Okay. The 30 second period is known as the contact time. Okay. Now, once you have opened your bag, you will be obtain the sample. I'm going to take out a sample from this bag. Okay. So, the sample will be generally shipped in a tube like this, okay. So this is a sample containing tube, okay. I cannot reveal the details of the patient as this is a patient derived sample. Now this sample is basically a serum sample, you can see in the tube. And you can note that there is a small ward of bandage over here. Now there is a purpose for this specific ward of bandage here. So when I open the sample in the biological safety cabinet, any of the serum which drips from this particular tube will be trapped by this ward. It will not spill onto my gloves and cause a breach of containment. So this is one of the key aspects of transporting samples from hospitals. They must be accompanied with the proper transport security. Now, the technician who has drawn the sample or the doctor at the hospital has to ensure that the sample is properly labeled and properly bagged so as to ensure that the, the transport agent or the one who transport the sample to the hospital as well as the technician who works in the laboratory is basically protected from the biological agent. Okay. Now what happens when these samples come into our lab? Uh, basically, there are two types of samples which come in. The first in which we have to culture the biological agent. So, in this case, we practice the extreme set of precautions and we assess the risk in terms of a live culture. So, the sample, for instance, bacterial samples may need to be transferred onto media. In the case of serum samples which have to be analyzed, for instance, nucleic acids, or in this case, we are analyzing samples from COVID-19 patients or suspected patients, we move on to the next step which is inactivation of the sample. Now for inactivation of the samples, we have to follow the standard operating procedure for that particular biological agent. In this case of COVID-19, it involves elevating the sample to a temperature of 60 to 70 degrees in a thermal block and after a period of one hour, the sample is basically inactivated. Now remember that all these procedures must be conducted within a biological safety cabinet with the appropriate PPEs and in accordance with the administrative procedures or administrative controls. Once the sample is inactivated, 
we can process to the next step which is the extraction of the nucleic acid which must also be conducted in a biological safety cabinet. Once the nucleic acid is extracted, the sample is ready for processing which in terms of the analysis. So in our case for COVID-19, we use a thermal cycler, a real-time thermal cycler which will analyze the sample for the specific biological agent. Now all these aspects need to be integrated into your sample preparation strategy. You must assess the risk of the procedure itself. So coming back to what we have learned, we have a risk assessment. So we assess the risk posed by the biological agent. So in the case of a sample from hospital patients, we assume the highest risk. We then apply the specific controls. So in this case, I'm in a biological safety level 3 laboratory and I'm applying the pertinent engineering controls as well as the personal protective equipment which I'm wearing and the engineering controls which is this unit itself. These are some of the key points which you need to take into consideration when managing biological agents derived from known as well as unknown samples. Thank you very much for watching this short segment. I will discuss further in my lecture. In the meantime, stay biosafe. Thank you.